happens? Man, is it happening here? This is Monastiraki Square. Basically the central square of Athens, not the biggest square or anything, but uh, one of the main gathering points for tourists and locals. Lots of shops around here. I was planning to uh, start this video up there, the Parthenon, built in the 5th century BC, atop the Acropolis. The Parthenon is the building, the Acropolis is the whole hill there. You can walk up this way, which is what I'm going to do in just a minute, and uh, get some amazing views and also go view the Parthenon up close. The most iconic image of Greece and one of the most historic architectural wonders in the world, built during the classical period of Greece, a time of much art and philosophy and science and Plato and Aristotle and Socrates and all that. So, I have an important mission for today. It is to get a bicycle. My third Greek Islands biking trip will begin soon. Probably tomorrow I will catch a ferry out to the islands. But uh, first, the kind of daunting task of finding the right bike at a decent price. So I am going to once again despite the annoyance of some of my viewers probably tell the story of the bicycle incident the last time uh, that I did a bike trip. I'm going to make it uh, pretty quick as, you know, quick as I can here. But there's a uh, cool thing, which is that this is my third Greek Islands bike trip. The first one was in 2009. The second one was in 2016, seven years later. It is now seven years later once again from 2016, so it seems to be a uh, seven-year occurrence. So one of the reasons why I'm going to uh, tell the story here is because this spot right over there factors into the story. And also down the street there, which is where I'm going to go uh, soon. So I arrived in 2016 with the plan to get a bicycle and take it out to the islands. The first time in 2009, I brought my own mountain bike over from Portland, Oregon, took it on the plane. And so I uh, am walking around this area and I find all these thrift stores, secondhand stores that are down the street, and I see some bicycles along there. I uh, see a couple of crappy bikes, but nothing good. And so I'm thinking of just going with one of the crappy bikes. My budget was, you know, super low at that time. But I decided not to buy one of the bikes then. I came back the next day and found just the absolute perfect bike. Mountain bike, really good looking, worked great. And then I headed off to the islands, had a six week trip in Greece, came back, had a flight out of Athens and wanted to uh, try to sell the bike, but I didn't have much time. So. I parked myself right over there. It was like July, middle of the afternoon like this, really hot, with a sign that said, bicycle for sale. And I just had absolutely no luck. I think that my price was too much at first. I kept dropping the price, like one person asked about it but wasn't interested. Finally, I was like getting heat stroke after an hour and a half or whatever, trying to sell this bike and gave up. And so I walked over to a restaurant and kind of a bar down that street there, I left the bike leaning up against like a pole without locking it because I really didn't care at that point and I was going to sit nearby anyways. And so I take a seat and then the waitress that comes up to me when I'm sitting there says, you know, you should really lock your bike because she noticed that I just left it there. And then I explained the whole situation and why I didn't care if it got stolen or whatever. And she said, well, if you want, I'll store the bike for you and then you can come get it when you come back. 
And so I said, great. She gave me two email addresses. I gave her the bicycle and then said goodbye. It wasn't until like, I forget, maybe two years later or something, that I was back in Greece and in Athens because I'd had other trips to Greece in which I didn't come to Athens. And so it was like a few trips later. And so I sent her an email and she never replied. So I don't think uh, that it was like some scam or whatever for her to try to steal this bike off me. I bet she had no use for it. Probably she thought I was gonna come back in a few weeks and I came back like two years later. She'd probably given it away or sold it or whatever and then didn't know what to say when I wrote her. So anyways, uh, that is it. The story of the last uh, bike adventure. So now the plan is to head down there once again, check the thrift stores and see if I have any luck. I definitely want a good, solid, reliable bike. I'm not going to take just whatever. So if uh, I don't find a good one secondhand, then I will go to some proper bike shops and buy a new one. But first, Let's get up on the hill, on the Acropolis, and see the views. More of the ancient ruins here. Why? Why? The library of Hadrian. So Hadrian was a Roman emperor. So that is later history than the Parthenon. The uh, very short story is that the uh, Greeks basically dominated this area during that time period for centuries and then there was the rise of the Roman Empire and uh, then it gets very complicating but uh, they conquered a lot of Greek territory and apparently were right here in Athens. More ancient ruins and very impressive. So is this Roman or Greek? Looks like we have a sign. Ooh, I see Greek written up there. But it's a Roman Agora. Agora is marketplace. Wow, a really impressive uh, building over there. I don't know that I've ever uh, been inside this one. Let's see if I can just uh, pay for the ticket right here. I think this is the ticket office. So it is eight euros to go in here. I decided to skip it since that's kind of a lot for a uh, minor sight here, plus the fact we can see it pretty well from right here. But uh, let's wander over to the other side and get a closer look at that tower, which looks really cool. So uh, it is heating up here. Today is June 9th. It is currently 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 30 degrees Celsius, a good solid, proper, sunny, summer, warm day. So yay for that. So I checked the uh, history of the Library of Hadrian. It was built by Emperor Hadrian in AD 132. So these ruins are probably the same era because they're also Roman as opposed to Greek up there. 
And of course, there are lots and lots of other Greek ruins scattered all throughout the city. So it's just this jumbled mix of different empires and phases of history. Classical Greek, Roman, Byzantine, etc. So those are really cool. Uh, looks like maybe angels with horns on the side of that uh, tower. Really cool. I'm sure that I've seen that before, but I don't remember. <laughs> and it seems like I would remember if I would noticed it and looked at it because it is quite uh, extraordinary. Maybe I just never happened to walk around here specifically and always went up this way or something. This is classic Greece, these uh, little shaded dining areas. Really cool painting here. And so this is where I was trying to get to. There is the ticket office if you want to go into the Parthenon. I'm not planning to do that today. But I wanted to get up onto this hill with the ultimate view of Athens and the Parthenon. My first time here in Athens and in Greece and visiting the Parthenon was in end of June, early July, 1990. My first international trip when I was 18 years old. Spent four months in Europe, spent a month of it in Greece, and I visited the uh, Parthenon. called Areopagus Hill. The Areopagus, a rocky outcrop, approximately 150 meters high, or about 350, 400 feet, is situated between three other hills, the Acropolis, the Penix, and the Colonos Agorios. Its name probably derives from Ares, the god of war. In the Mycenaean and geometric periods, 1550 to 700 BC, the northern slope of the hill served as a cemetery which contained both chamber tombs and simple cyst graves. From the 6th century BC onwards, the hillside as a whole became a residential quarter belonging to the prestigious district of Melite. Late Roman period, 4th to 6th centuries AD. The Areopagus is also associated with the spread of Christianity into Greece. In 51 AD, Apostle Paul is said to have taught the Athenians the tenets of the new religion. Wow, I didn't know about that. Among the converts was Dionysios, the Areopagite, the patron saint of the city of Athens. So a whole lot of history around here and you can see it in the rocks and how smooth they are as a result of millions and millions of sandals walking over these rocks for thousands of years 
they are extremely, extremely slippery, especially you can see right there, it's all shiny. And here, an epic view of the capital and largest city of Athens. Again, you have to be very, very careful here. They are just polished. Another shot of that cool tower and the Acropolis and Parthenon, Greek flag up there. And now, the quest for the bicycle begins. Bicycle, oh bicycle, where art thou bicycle? Not gonna find it here, that's for sure. But let's uh, walk through the market here. Definitely not an authentic Greek market, but uh, a good spot for some shopping and nice and cool. Good place to get your sandals. So, Mona Staraki, in the Greek language there, Mona Staraki Square is just right there. And then down here is where I found the bicycle the last time. But that was seven years ago. It looks like we do still have the secondhand shops, but the bike that I found was right along here, out on the street. Here you have antique furniture shops. Not looking good for bicycles so far. Huh. This seems to be kind of a whole secondhand area which I don't know if I've ever actually walked through before. Very interesting. Boom, a bicycle. Not the one that I'm looking for. A one-speed, rusted out, flat tire, flat tire. That is funny, well, bicycle found, but uh, that is not going to do the trick. Books, a plenty. Scooter. Motorbike. Bicycle wheels. Oh no, those are, well they might be bike wheels. A cart. So this, I guess, is the authentic Greek market area. Another bicycle, probably owned by somebody. 
That's a half decent one, but uh, I would rather have a mountain bike. Look what we got. Circo's bikes. Okay. 520 euros. That is what I was not wanting to pay. Especially since I will probably be stuck with it when I get back from my trip and in the same position, unable to sell it. I could stay in Athens for a few days trying to sell it or whatever, but uh, wow, these are expensive. Hello. Yes, hello. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, this is the place. And boom, sold. So the price was 380 euros, but he gave it to me at a discounted rate of 300 euros. The helmet was 65 euros, but he gave it to me for 35 euros. So 300 plus 35, and then I got a tube repair kit and an extra tube. It all came to 344 euros, which is $370 US. So uh, pretty good deal, I think. It is titanium. But there was one that was steel. It was 265 euros. This one is the better, lighter kind of uh, material. Pretty good looking bike there, brand new, all ready to roll. So the only little thing is that I forgot to bring my bicycle lock. I have a bicycle lock that I travel with, and so it is back in my room. But I'm really hungry and want to go to a restaurant and take a seat, get out of this hot sun. This is the exact spot where I was trying to sell the bike back in 2016. And so uh, I'm going to have to find somewhere where I can just leave the bike right next to me as I sit and eat. So let's go back into the uh, shaded areas back there. Lots of uh, cool restaurants and find somewhere to get some Greek food. So I know that I've shown this area plenty of times before. But I'm uh, going to show it again. The colorful back streets behind the Acropolis and Monastiraki Square. They seem to be getting more and more graffiti. But it is interesting back in here. I'm hoping to uh, stop at this restaurant right up ahead. Nice shaded spot. And check it out, this restaurant has an amazing beer selection. Man, tons of good ones. Oh yeah, these are all some of my favorites. With a bike. Sure. <laughs> because uh, you are doing a big effort. It, it's just a video, so. Ah, ah it's just a video. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, viva Grecia, welcome in Greece. 
Nados, the warrior. Alrighty. The warrior. Where are I head for the islands? Um, um, which islands? I haven't decided, but like Folagandros, Kia. Bravo, you know. Idra. No, after Folagandros, if you go Folagandros, go to Phoenicia also. This is, this is what I planned. Yeah. Dun Danusa, Heraclea. Danusa, Heraclea, to Phoenicia, but exactly. bravo, you know. Exactly. You know the life. That is the plan. Exactly. I've been to Santorini, Mykonos, time to go to the others. Exactly. No, uh, give them to go uh, the other countries. Exactly. They can take all the tourists. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, man. Have a good one.